Hey, what's up, guys? Coach Austin here. Welcome to episode 28 of the Physique Development Podcast, a podcast bringing you structured Q&As, deep dives on single topics, and inside looks at our team. So before we dive into things today, I wanted to start with a newer segment, reviews and comments. To get you all more involved in the podcast, each episode, we're going to read one comment and one review uh, to help show our appreciation uh, of you guys engaging and also to help answer any questions that may arise during previous episodes. Okay, so I'm going to start with a review and I'm going to read a comment from YouTube and that's how the segment's going to go. All right, so the review is from Sydney Talet. Talet. I'm not uh, very good at reading names, so bear with me here, but Sydney, here is her review. I work with Team PD, and they are truly some of the best and most caring, intelligent people in this field. I've already learned so much from my time with Alex, and I'm excited to learn even more from this podcast. Thank you, Sydney. Podcast reviews go a long way, so if you guys do leave those, um, one, we'd love to read them. We'd love to see them. We do see each and every one that does come through, and we're, we're so, so appreciative of those. So again, thank you, Sydney. And then the YouTube comment. All right, so this one's got two questions attached to it actually all right so this is from episode one taking it all the way back thought i'd start from the beginning episode one so those two questions that were left on the bottom in that comment section on youtube so here we go these are from keep quiet that's your, that's the youtube name all right question number one rate of weight gain when bulking for females okay it's hard to know okay so the answer here is it's hard to know exactly what number or percentage may be best for each person but it's gonna depend on their short and long-term goals, right? This typically comes down to a conversation between you and your clients or you and yourself. And then you can get the best plan of action and progress with an appropriate pace from there, okay? So common goals really though, uh, to really kind of gauge it is typically between 0.5 to 1% of body weight per month of weight gain. Uh, but again, this is so contextual to your goals, whether it be short-term or long-term but hopefully that does help. Uh, and that can go really for females or males. I will say uh, for females, it's probably not, I mean, barring that you're not coming out of contest prep or um, you know, you're, not, you're not severely you know, being undernourished or your calories are super low. Um, if, you're, if you're in a good place and you're somewhere around maintenance already, or at least somewhere close, uh, it doesn't take a huge surplus to kind of aid in those goals of, of gaining strength and muscle and stuff like that. Males can typically get away with a little bit more calorically um, in terms of a, a true surplus, uh, but females typically can't get away with as big of one. Okay, so uh, when increasing calories into a surplus uh, from a maintenance, do be a little bit more cautious. Uh, females out there, if you're listening and uh, coaches who are listening with female clients, um, I would recommend being a little bit more cautious with how quickly you do raise those calories up from maintenance. And again, just kind of gauge that per month and, and be sure you're going at a good pace. Um, and then obviously appropriately adjusting for how feedback's going and, and training volume and all of that stuff. Question number two, at-home training for bulking. I know we're more into lockdowns around the world here as this ne next wave comes through. So if you have only resistance bands, are we saying that higher frequency is better? So in episode when we touched on higher frequency training, um, basically went into building an at-home training program in episode one, and we talked about higher frequency training programs. And so my answer here is yes, high frequency can be better at home. And the reason why is if you do not have the ability to have higher loads or relative intensities, we have found it more valuable to adjust training frequency to increase the overall stimulus or stress on the muscle. Whether this to induce or lead to growth, uh, it's hard to be you know, more or less based on that individual, right? But what we can say is as long as you are training close to failure with appropriate volumes, you will at least maintain muscle for the most part and be in a good spot when gyms do open back up in your area um, or you have more access to loads. Um, but if you're just training at home with limited equipment, you can make progress with more frequent training and make sure you're training relatively close to failure within four to five reps of you know failure at least. 
and you know have good you know an appropriate amount of training volume there okay that's it for this segment if you guys want to be uh on an episode or if you guys want to look back at uh, episode one there i'm answering questions from that so the episode one was keys to female muscle growth creating habits and designing an at-home training program um, you can listen on any platform or watch it on youtube and if you guys would like to or like for us to read your questions on the podcast leave us a comment under this youtube video or leave us a review on apple and we'll we'll include you guys in this segment very, very appreciative. All right, let's get into today's topic. In today's episode, we're going to discuss the importance of exercise technique, okay? I'll repeat that one more time. We're gonna be talking about and discussing the importance of exercise technique, okay? So we often get asked, why is exercise technique so important? Does it really matter? Doesn't it only matter for time under tension training, et cetera, et cetera, right? We get these questions all of the time. And to start this discussion, I thought it would be helpful to know why our ability to safely and effectively place tension on the muscle is so important. Okay, so we're going to define some important terms here in the beginning. The first one's going to be mechanical tension. The second is going to be what exercise technique even is, what it does it encompass and entail. Okay, so mechanical tension is the tension placed on a muscle fiber actively or passively during resistance training. Okay, so this is currently known to be the biggest contributing factor to building muscle, but is also very important within building strength and improving body composition. Okay, and tension is going to produce muscle damage, those micro tears within the muscle fiber, and contribute to metabolic stress, the accumulation of metabolic byproducts within the muscle fiber during training. Okay, so tension uh, not only is kind of that, you know, main thing for us within exercise or strength training, uh, more specifically, but tension is also going to produce those two other things, right? Muscle damage and metabolic stress, which is typically why you hear all of those things discussed together. Okay. And then exercise, exercise technique demonstrates how one is performing any given exercise. This involves proper setup, understanding what the exercise demands, con you know, the concentration, the proper breathing, the bracing, and a controlled rep repetition tempo of that exercise. Okay, so that's an all-encompassing sort of look at what exercise technique is. Okay, so that's going to take us in to kind of the 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 bone, the meat, you know, the meat of the episode today. And in the process of of learning, you know, it's important to see concepts put into some form of practical application, right? This helps give context to new information. And for the sake of this podcast, I want to apply this, this concept of significant tension to something near and dear to all of our hearts, which is building muscle, right? That's probably important to some degree to all of us listening. If your goal is building muscle, you need to be able to create significant amounts of tension within the muscles you're training at a high enough volume to hit a threshold to stimulate an adaptation, to stimulate a growth response within the muscle, right? And obviously nutrition plays a, a hand in that, recovery plays a hand in that as well, right? But kind of that first line of defense is our ability to create that tension to begin with, right? We need something to kind of act as that catalyst, right? That spark to make all of this kind of happen downstream, right? So there are a handful of factors that will come into play here, two of those. Uh, being execution and load. Okay, so I'm going to use execution and technique probably pretty interchangeably. I typically do. Um, just know I'm kind of talking. I'm talking about the same thing there. So exercise technique, exercise execution, same thing uh, in in relation to how I'm discussing them today. Okay, so those two things were execution and load. Okay, so execution again. This is going to determine which muscle is receiving stress from that external load that we're lifting within our workouts, and then load. Execution works alongside load, which is important. And with load, you need a significant enough load to create significant tension within the muscle tissue, right? So to make sense of this, you know, a little bit more generally is, you know, you can't just, there's only so much you could do with just sitting here and contracting your biceps, you know, or, or lifting a, a can of Campbell's soup, right? You know, you can't just stand in line at the, the grocery store and do a thousand reps with the Campbell's soup, right? There's going to be maybe over the first couple sessions, you could get some sort of response, right? But, you know, realistically thinking about that, you're going to plateau pretty quick, right? There's 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 only a certain amount of load and stress that, that can be 
given to that muscle tissue from that Campbell soup can, right? Um, so again, load is very, very important within this exercise or within this execution and technique equation to contribute to the greater part of this, the greater whole of this discussion. Um, the next one's volume, okay? So is there's a threshold, threshold amount of tension and load that needs to be achieved on that given muscle tissue to trigger the adaptation, right? And the better your exercise technique or execution is, and your ability to apply that load where you need it will require less total volume to achieve the threshold stimulus needed, right? So more quality will equal less quantity needed, okay? And if we can achieve the same stimulus on the muscle with less overall volume, this leads to less stress on the overall system and less wear and tear on passive tissues, uh, connective tissues, joints, things like that. And this will also allow for more room for progressive overload in the future. And it also allows us to not have to put as much resource allocation into our recovery because we're not accumulating a lot of unneeded junk volume, right? So we hear this term thrown around a lot with junk volume, and this essentially just crappy volume, it's just poor execution, poor technique, you kind of going through the motions, just accumulating stress on the body that doesn't necessarily need to happen. Um, if we had better quality reps, better quality sets, better quality volume, making up our workouts. Okay. And the next thing here is tempo and intent. Okay. So when looking to get the most out of the tension that we're creating out of that relative load, the tempo and intent will need to be proportionate to the resistance profile and load being used to maximize the benefit of each rep, right? And we'll get into all of that nuance within resistance profiles and, and all of that stuff in, in later episodes. But I just wanted to mention that today. Basically, resistance profile is highlighting where that rep is hardest within the range of motion, right? So like in a bicep curl and a dumbbell bicep curl, it's hardest within that middle, right? Or a leg extension, it's typically hardest at the top. Or a back squat, it's typically hardest at the bottom. Right. Um, so we'll kind of go into that a little bit more in future episodes, but I, I just wanted to highlight that. Okay. So this isn't about lifting intentionally slow. It's about improving the amount of tension placed on target muscles, which leads to increased loads and stimulus or stress on that muscle. Okay. Which can decrease rep speeds organically. Okay. When loads increase to challenging levels. So as you can see, I basically went over that stuff. So as you can see here, your ability to execute movements properly will heavily, heavily, heavily play into your ability to move loads with tissues you are trying to work, right? This goes back to why are we training? Why are we doing these specific exercises, right? We do specific exercises to train specific tissues or a combination of tissues, okay? So that combination of execution and load will help achieve that needed amount of volume on each muscle needed to create an adaptation, okay? And your ability to manage that tension with tempo and intent will allow you to maximize the benefit of each rep. So if your ultimate goal is to build muscle, the better you are creating significant tension in the intended muscle, the better the opportunity you will have to stimulate adaptation for muscle growth, okay? And when paired with proper nutrition, recovery and periodization, you have, or at least the starting blocks for the recipe for success there. Okay, so why is this information important? Why did I go over this? Knowing this information, we can create a hierarchy of importance on creating high levels of tension within the muscle within a given exercise of training session. Okay, so for example, in the early years of any sport, right, you practice the basics, you practice the fundamentals. That practice drives progression. Your coach rounds you up. Let's say you're playing basketball, right? Your coach rounds you up, tells you to quit chucking three pointers up and has you perform dribbling drills, passing drills, do the fundamentals, the boring stuff, right? The stuff we don't wanna do as kids, the stuff we don't wanna probably do as adults, right? The fundamentals really add up. So learning how to sprint even starts with drills that don't involve running at all. Even well into specialized skills or sports like basketball or sprinting, you're gonna find yourself always returning back to the fundamentals. And it seems there's always room for improvement for the things that define the, mo the most basic form of what you do. Okay, so if you play basketball, you got to be able to dribble, you got to be able to pass, right? I don't care how good of a shooter you are, right? If you can't dribble, you can't pass, you're not going to be a very good asset to your team, right? And if you're a sprinter, let's say, to keep with the metaphor or the analogy here, 
If you're a sprinter and you don't have very good mechanics, you don't have very good fundamentals of sprinting or running, you're probably not, there's, there's going to be a threshold in which you can progress, right? We, we, you know, the Olympics just happened. You can see everyone in that Olympic trial or that, that Olympics, that Olympic run or heat has very good fundamentals when it comes to sprinting. It's very important. So where does all this fit in? Where does exercise technique fit into this giant equation? So attention and focus towards properly and safely performing exercises, not only helping to produce more tension, can also help reduce your risk of injury, keep you, keeping you in the gym, obtaining countless health benefits consistently, consistently sorry, over time, including muscle growth, gaining strength, and improving your body composition, right? So a big, big thing um, about strength training and, and getting all the health benefits that it brings is staying in the gym consistently, right? You know, you can have the best, this goes back to, to hearing people always talk about, right? You can have the best, most scientifically backed, you know, best rep scheme, you name it out there. But if you don't stay in the game, if you can't stay consistent to that, or if you're constantly getting injured, then we're not gaining the health benefits from that. We're not gaining the, the ability to put on more muscle, gain strength and improve body composition. The same as that person who is consistent, right? And so exercise technique is such a big part of that, right? So that intention, that attention and focus towards properly and safely performing exercises can help reduce that risk of injury, keeping you in the gym, obtaining countless health benefits consistently over time, right? And in general, strength, and resistance training is a mode of physical fitness that takes practice to improve its overall effectiveness and reduce the risk of injury, like we were saying. So proper, proper exercise execution or technique can lead to an increased level of mechanical tension, which we defined in the beginning of this episode, on that desired muscle group, right? And this is the main driver for muscle retention and growth, which is very, very important, right? And keeps the body within a safe and controlled movement pattern leading to the potential reduction of injury and improved body composition, like we've been saying. These are very, very important things. So simply put, exercise technique is a fundamental skill of strength training, right? It's a fundamental, it's as fundamental to strength training as dribbling is to basketball, as to sprint mechanics are to sprinting, right? So as coaches, as trainers, it's part of our jobs to ensure our clients can safely and effectively perform the exercises prescribed to them. And the better they are at this skill, the safer they're going to be and the more effective their training sessions will become. This is very, very important, not only for you as the individual training, but for your clients, extremely important, keeping them in the gym, making their training more effective and safer for them long-term. Okay, so whether your goal is building strength, muscle, or losing body fat, as long as you're using strength training as that vehicle, it's in your best interest to get really good at the sole thing you're doing, which is lifting weights, which is the exercise technique, right? So again, kind of going back to our analogy here, expecting to be good at basketball without the ability to dribble is the same thing you're looking to do within strength training without the skill of properly and effectively performing each rep that makes up that session. And if your argument to this is, there's a lot of arguments to this actually, which is really surprising to me. And, and maybe if you're listening, you're, you're kind of stewing in your seat, right? You're kind of like, this doesn't matter. This, this doesn't matter. And if you're saying this doesn't matter, then let's really think about how improving on this skill could make matters worse. How could improving your ability to, to manage tension and load, how could your, how could the ability of being able to focus tension where you want it on that specific muscle group, how to allocate volume more specifically to those muscle groups in your training sessions could be a bad thing. How could reducing your potential risk of injury be a bad thing? How could improving the quality of your overall training sessions of yourself or your clients be a bad thing? I don't think it, it can be, right? That, that doesn't make sense, right? So big things here, okay, big pillars. Exercise technique demonstrates how one is performing any given exercise, right? This, in, this involves proper setup. This involves the understanding of what the exercise demands, what anatomy it's using, the concentration you need to have, the focus you need to have during the execution of that movement, proper breathing and bracing, and controlled rep tempo, right? These are all things that we go over in, in detail on our YouTube channel, right? We have 
countless videos on our YouTube channel going over exercise technique of, of think of a movement. Hopefully it's on our YouTube channel, right? And if it's not, leave us a comment and let us know which one you would like to see if it's not on there. Okay. So does it matter? Does exercise execution matter? And the answer is it does, right? And we've seen this in real time with countless, countless clients that we've worked with over the past eight plus years. Exercise technique matters. Longevity, it matters, right? Quality, it matters. Okay. Thank you guys for listening. If you guys have any questions on exercise technique, why it matters, maybe rewind the episode, restart the video and listen to me kind of iron out those, those fine points in the middle of this episode on why all this stuff is so important when it comes to managing, managing exercise technique, managing the exercise technique paired with the load you're using. And then pairing that exercise technique and load that you're using within a appropriate amount of training volume, right? And how those two things impact the amount of volume you actually need within your sessions, right? You may actually find out that you need less overall volume in your sessions. Okay. So with clients in like real world application here with clients, I've actually noticed the better clients get at performing training volume or at, at performing those reps within their session and the better quality that training volume is, right? So let's the, the less overall volume they need per session or per phase, right? Which, as we talked about earlier, makes recovery that much better, which makes our quality of work that much better within those sessions, right? Getting us stronger, faster, getting us more muscle, hopefully faster, be it that our nutrition and recovery are there right? And it improves our body composition even quicker, right? So the more we can place tension on that tissue, right? The more we're engaging that tissue, the more metabolically active that muscle tissue is, right? St systemically. So that is great for improving body composition, for improving muscle growth and improving strength potential, right? Very, very important. Okay. So Hopefully this helps. Hopefully this gives context to why we think exercise technique is so important, right? Why we place such an importance on it, right? We don't just do it to make sure you train slowly, right? It's not about training slow, right? It's about developing a skill, a fundamental to improve what we're doing in general within what we're doing in the gym, which is training, which is all starts with our ability to execute each and every rep within each set, within each workout, within each training phase, within each training year, right? And the better those are, the better things get overall. Thanks for listening, guys.